Welcome back to Drum Tip TV. Today one of the things we're going to discuss that I cannot stress the importance of enough is adapting to the room that you're playing in. So first things first, let's just talk about the snare drum. A lot of times when I'm working with students, what we talk about is if we think about different dynamic levels, we've got everything from double P, which would be pianissimo, all the way up to double F, which would be fortissimo. Now, there's you know some softer, some louder, but those are generally the ranges that you're gonna be working within. And what I like to do is I like to think of those dynamic ranges with a number kind of attached to them. So, if we have fortissimo, we wanna think about that as being the loudest. So that would be very loud. We're gonna be on 10 for fortissimo. And if we go down to forte, we only want to go down maybe one, possibly two notches from there. So there's not much of a difference, but enough of a difference that if I play something for you or if you play something for somebody else, they could tell a difference. So a 10 would be fortissimo. Going all the way down to pianissimo would be about a one. So, so just barely heard. And what happens is, is depending upon the room that we're in, that level of dynamic is going to change. So for example, in this studio that I'm in right now, if I play a pianissimo, I might be... Okay, now I'm using a pretty delicate touch right there, but if I go into an auditorium or a concert hall, that's probably gonna change a little bit just because the acoustics are different, it's much different surroundings, I've got higher ceilings. So one thing I always stress to people is, you've got to adapt to the room that you're in. So if you're in a tightly, tightly closed in space with low ceilings, walls closer to you, or even if you have um, carpeting, things like that, that's going to make everything a little bit more, um, you're gonna to have to adjust even more so. But if I go out in the parking lot, then my fortissimo can be way louder. I can really rip into that just because there's no acoustic surroundings whatsoever. So that's really important to take notice of is if you're in a room that you're more closed in, you've got to play the dynamic for what that room speaks to you, okay? Now on the other side of things, if I'm playing um, with a band, when I go into a, a venue to play, the one thing I always try to do is I try to adapt not only my own playing, but the band's playing as well to that particular room. So if you, first of all, if you're not already wearing earplugs when you perform, I highly suggest it. Maybe we'll do another video on that sometime. But whenever we begin a show, I always spend about the first four or five songs without my earplugs in. And the reason why is because I'm trying to tune myself and the band to the sound of that room and what that room is offering acoustically. So um, number one, with the drums, we have the ability to change the dynamic level that we're playing at just with our hands and our feet, which is pretty rare because all of the other instruments, especially electric ones, guitars, basses, electric piano, keyboards, they all have volume knobs, okay? But we can control that dynamic level. So when you're going into a venue, you want to think about how does this sound in here? I mean, that's one reason why we have sound check, but at the same time, as we all know, once we start playing the first song, the energy comes up a little bit, and especially if you have a dance floor there, everything changes. So the most important things coming from this video would be if you're going into a room and you have to adapt to it, notice what your surroundings are, whether you're playing just a snare drum or a drum set, and especially with the band, you wanna be able to adapt as well. I'll send you off with one little trick. If I'm at a live show, and if I can tell that I really think that the band has gotten to a level where we're probably a little bit too hot, so like you know, maybe the energy is really fired up, the dance floor is packed, that's a good thing, but at the same time, we don't want to be too loud for that room because we still want people to be able to enjoy what we're doing. So what I'll sometimes do is I'll actually intentionally pull my volume back a little bit and hopefully the musicians that I'm playing with recognize that and then they in turn will do the same thing. So remember, as the drummer, you have a really important role in that you can help to control the dynamics of any band that you play with. So take that into consideration and we'll see you next video.